Hi everybody, Zeef Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to a quick lecture, and this time I'm going to talk about fear, why dentists are shying away from surgery and not moving forward. And the reason I recorded it is that often dentists approach me after a lecture and they tell me that they are now, you know, with knowledge and information and skills to perform surgery, but they're still afraid to mess it up and create some problems and complications for their patients. So they're not moving forward with surgery. So the first thing that I tell them is that fear is a totally normal human emotion. We all have fears in life and throughout life. And just to give you a couple of samples, uh, you know, a lot of people have the fear of being poor or the fear of being sick. Now, by the way, if you're poor and sick, that that's pretty bad. It's probably one of the worst things, uh, you know, unless you're also not being loved, which is another um, human fear. So we can have a lot of uh, fears in life and, you know, fear of dying young, a fear of disappointing, disappointing others or disappointing ourselves. Now, when it comes to surgery, we can also be afraid of disappointing our patients or disappointing our staff and ourselves. Now, the dentists that I work with, uh, some tell me that they're afraid to hurt a patient, afraid of complications or not getting the results or the good results. They're afraid of failures. And some are afraid of lawsuits and going through litigations, which is, you know, which is not fun. And it's a shame because now there's a great opportunity to incorporate surgery in your practice. And you can also help your patients in the process. You can build your practice, make it more successful and, and profitable for you. And more than anything, you can enjoy and have fun uh, performing surgery in your practice and enjoying the surgical aspect of dentistry. Now, these are great opportunities, but if you're afraid of surgery, afraid of performing a surgical procedure, what I call scalpelophobia, then your fear is going to be debilitating. Your fear is going to prevent you from moving forward. So I'm going to let you move forward until you understand it and also deal with it. So one of my first thoughts is, you know, if you have fear of performing surgery and you have those random thoughts and fears in your mind, instead of having this, you know, why don't you take all your thoughts and fears and put them in a list and call it the list of concerns. Once you have them in a list, they're much more manageable. You can start tackling them one after one and understand them more. Now, you have to be a little bit more specific and elaborate what exactly is holding you back. What are you afraid of? So when you say, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to hurt a patient, what do you mean? So dentists tell me that they're afraid to create a permanent disfigurement for the patients. And when you talk about complications, what type of complications are you afraid of? Be very, very specific. Are you afraid of bleeding? Are you afraid of swelling, infection? Are you afraid of nerve damage that you'll cause? Uh, you have to know exactly what you're dealing with. Now, when we talk about not getting the good results, I typically describe surgical procedures that work 85, 90%, high 90%, very high predictability. So some dentists are afraid to get lower success rates than that, lower than 90%. Now, the dentists that are afraid of lawsuits, they're afraid of loss of income, loss of their reputation, and sometimes the loss of the, of the practice. Now, if you're afraid of disappointment, some of, some of us are just, you know, afraid to disappoint patients, but if it's about, you know, really you, I think it's more of a, a, a hurt ego if you're afraid to disappoint yourself. So I'll tell you what can be done with it. The, the next thing that we need to do is figure out what are the chances that one of these fears, one of these... Um, um, problems will actually occur. And I wanted to give a very quick disclaimer that what I'm going to talk about next is out of my own personal experience and pertains to the procedures that I perform in my own practice. And, and everybody really knows that I'm, I perform minor surgical interventions, uh, periodontal surgery, bone grafting, soft tissue grafting, and dental implants. So what are the chances that these fears will actually come to life and really happen? So when we talk about hurting a patient or permanent disfigurement, the chances are zero. They will 
not happen. This is not a type. These are not types of procedures that can cause uh, damage of disfigurement. So that's for that. In regards to complications, they can certainly happen. Uh, not very commonly when we talk about bleeding. You know, about 1%, maybe a little bit less than that, uh, patients actually needing to come back because they have bleeding. Uh, for the most part, if there's any type of bleeding at home after surgery, under your instruction and guidance, patients can definitely stop the bleeding themselves. How about swelling? That's very common. 80 to 90% of all patients uh, with all these procedures will swell to some extent. It's a normal inflammatory response. It resolves after two days, so we're not very concerned about that. How about infections? Not very common, 2 to 4% that will require antibiotic treatment and, and management. Now, in regards to nerve damage, it's really close to zero, especially if you follow the rules, everything step by step. If you are uh, anatomy savvy and anatomy conscious, uh, the risk of nerve damage is uh, rather low or close to zero. And when we talk about success rates that are less than 90%, because I mentioned to you that you know the procedures that I show are predictable in the 90s or high 90% success rates. So statistically, if you're, you know, the chances of getting different result is basically between zero and 10%. Uh, that's my opinion. Now, probably some statistician can tell me, hey, you know, you can't really do that. That's not statistically correct, and there must be something else that you can. Uh, you know, provide your doctors with, but really, if you're getting success rates or results that are, you know, not very high, less than 90% and less than what I show you, basically what you need to do is practice and try more and improve your results to, to get to a level that is satisfactory to you and your patients. So uh, you can definitely increase your success rates. How about lawsuits, you know, those that cause the loss of income and damage your reputation? I don't know the percentage. Uh, I likely don't have the experience with uh, a, lo a lawsuit, and you, you probably hear me knocking on some, uh, knocking on the microphone. But the, um, the issue with lawsuits uh, really happen when the relationship, the doctor-patient relationship, has deteriorated. Mostly nothing to do with what you did. Uh, it's mostly an issue with trust and rapport, and if that is lacking, it leads to bad things. So I would encourage you to work very hard on creating great relationships with your patients, and typically that will prevent lawsuits. But I, I think definitely the uh, percentages are very, very low. How about if you get a, a complication and you know, you're afraid that your ego will be hurt and you'll be disappointed at yourself? Uh, you know, We have to remember that this is not about us. It's not about you. It's about the patients and helping patients with their needs and, and basically treating them and getting good results. So if your ego is hurt, then you know, unfortunately you'll have to let it go. You have to get over it and work really hard so you know, less and less complications happen in the future. So if you look at the list, you can definitely tell that the chances your fear, fears will actually happen and come true is very low. The chances are extremely low that these things will happen. And, and by the way, that's true in general. Most of the things we are fearful of and concerned about actually never happen. And the same thing goes in regards to your fear of surgery. There could be some things that need to be managed. You have to increase your knowledge and, and be aware that um, certain complications can occur and also learn how to manage them. But the risk and the chances these will actually happen are very, very low. And I would like you to take the opportunity and try to perform surgery in your practice and, and, and try to handle the fears. And one way is to put them in a list and be very specific about you, what you're fearful about and figure out what are the chances. So I hope this information is useful to you in uh, overcoming some of the fears you have uh, from performing a surgical procedure. If you'd like to see more lectures and get more information, visit me at surgicalmaster.com and I'm so happy to help you in the future.